Section 5.1, the nature of energy. So the study of energy and transformations between different kinds of energy is called thermodynamics. Uh, you can tell thermo like a thermos bottle, something that has heat. Uh, and dynamic simply means going up or down, uh, so not staying the same. So if, if you are studying how, how energy affects uh, chemistry, that's called thermochemistry. It's a relationship between chemical reactions and energy changes, normally involving heat. Uh, so a couple definitions. First of all, the definition of energy. Energy is the capacity to do work or it's the capacity to transfer heat. So if you put energy on something, you can either move it, move that object, uh, or uh, apply a force to it uh, through a distance. Remember, a force is a kind of a push or a pull like gravity is a force, or pushing something would be a force. If you apply a force times a distance, uh, which is called work, so uh, work is equal to force times a distance, or if you increase the temperature of an object, or make that temperature of an object to increase, both of those would require energy. There are various types of energy. Uh, the one would be kinetic energy, energy just due to motion of an object. So the formula here, E sub K, or kinetic energy, is one half mass times the square of the volume. That means that energy is directly related to the mass. So if I throw a uh, ping pong ball at you, it'll have a certain amount of energy when it hits you. If I throw a bowling ball at you, it would have a different amount of energy. Uh, even if I threw it at the same speed. If I threw a ping pong ball at you and then threw a ping pong ball at you faster, the faster one would be more energetic. So uh, that's what the relationships is. It's, uh, and in fact, it's the speed that has more of a consequence than even mass because the speed is squared. So the faster the speed, uh, energy is not just doubled, but could be, say, if you doubled the speed, you would quadruple the energy. The other kind of energy here uh, on the picture is potential energy, and potential energy is energy due to, um, to position. Uh, in physics, we have potential energy usually with an object in gravity, and you have, uh, you have the energy of potential is directly proportional to the mass times the gravity times how high you are. So how high you are away from the gravitational field would, would give you more potential because you could fall more. Um, in chemistry, most of the time you're not talking about moving objects, but you are talking about the interaction between charged particles. Electrostatic um, potential energy is here in this formula. Uh, the energy is directly related to charges. So this is a constant. It's just a uh, makes the proportion. This would be, say, one negative charge, and this would be another negative charge, uh, and the distance between them, and they want to repel. If the charges are oppositely charged, they want to attract. So the distance between them is going to make uh, the cl well the closer the energy, the more uh, the closer the distance the more the energy uh, that you have, the farther the distance, the less of the energy that you would have. Now this potential energy can be converted into kinetic energy. So for instance, if you think of these two, uh, these two particles being close together and having a certain attractive force, and then you let them fall move, they'll start moving and start moving faster and faster and faster until they, until they get together. Likewise, if you have two re repelling particles and, you, and they have an energy and then you let them go, they will go away from each other. So you can convert, or if you think of a bike at the top of the hill, it has potential energy, it starts rolling, it's gonna, it's gonna get faster and faster. So you can have a conversion between potential and kinetic energy. One of the problems is that you're usually not going to um, perfectly interchange from one to another. Sometimes you're going to get a drop off where energy is, um, escapes as say heat or something like that. So if you have inner uh, molecule, uh, molecules uh, that are bumping into each other, uh, it's, uh, it's possible that, that the heat generated just by the friction 
is leaching off and the energy drops in some way. So, so you have potential energy, you have kinetic energy, you also have heat energy, and that heat, sometimes heat can't be converted back, but potential and kinetic uh, certainly can be interconverted. So the unit of energy is the joule. It's also the unit of work. If you remember that work we saw was equal to force times a distance. So a force times a distance is a newton times a meter. If you were to, uh, to then take that to a certain speed, meters squared, or meters per second, then you end up with a joule. And a joule is uh, the unit of energy. Uh, you can also have a calorie. A calorie is defined now as 4.184 joules. Um, and it's an older unit. It was a unit of how much energy does it take to raise uh, one gram of water one degree Celsius. That's a calorie. Um, a joule is, is four calories. Now a kilocalorie, remember, is, is different. That's like a candy bar. That would be a thousand calories. So a big C calorie, like a food calorie, is a thousand little calories or a kilocalorie. One really important uh, point that we have to mention at the beginning here is that when you're talking about transferring of heat and energy and work, um, I need to know what is it that I'm talking about specifically. And so we, we define anything that we want to study as the system. And then anything else is called the surroundings. So for instance, this is a piston. I guess this is like in, in your car. And you've got some energized molecules bumping around. And as it bumps around, it creates a pressure, and the pressure can move that piston. So if I'm moving that piston, I'm doing work on that piston, well, I'm doing work on the surroundings. Because if I'm just looking at the energy of the molecules, then the molecule would be the system. The surroundings would be everything else that's not what you're studying. So if you're studying just the uh, the the changes of matter and energy inside the test tube and then the test tube gets hot then what's happened is the energy in the system inside the system inside your chemicals are actually doing something to the test tube which is not what I'm studying so the test tube and the environment would be this the surroundings and the chemicals themselves would be the system so just as a review a work remember energy is uh, anything that will do work on something or can cause a temperature raise. So work is, is an energy to move something. Um, so for instance, if a, if a cloud is getting, a cloud is just water vapor, and if a cloud is getting bigger, then what it has to be doing is pushing on the air around that cloud. So it's doing work on the surroundings. So uh, force, the force of say that cloud, pushing against the air moved at a certain distance is the work that that cloud is doing on its surroundings. So W is work, force is F, and distance is, dif distance is the uh, length of time, length of space over which that force is exerted. And so work is F times D. Energy can also be transferred as heat, and heat will always flow from warmer objects to cooler objects. So the idea of temperature is really just something that suggests energy. The higher the temperature, the more the energy. The lower the temperature, the lower the energy. So temperature is almost um, an indicator of the energy that's, that a system may have or not have.